Hi everybody, it's Adam with heartvalvesurgery.com and this is a special surgeon question and answer session all about patient candidacy for robotic mitral valve surgery. I am thrilled to be joined by Dr. Hussam Balki, who is a leading cardiac surgeon with a super specialty in robotic mitral valve surgery at the University of Chicago Medicine in Chicago, Illinois. Dr. Balki, it is great to see you again, and thanks for being with me today. Thank you, Adam. Great to see you again as well. Yeah, so Dr. Balki, we're going to talk all about your specialty in robotics. But first, I want to thank you for being a long, long time supporter of heartvalvesurgery.com. We've known each other for over 15 years. We've filmed several videos together educating patients. And last I checked, you have successfully treated over 75 patients in our community. So thanks so much to everything you and your team are doing to help our patients. Thank you. I appreciate that, uh, Adam. And, and yes, we've known each other for, uh, for 15 years now. And um, I'm a big fan of what you're doing. Uh, I think it's a great uh, service to our patients that are uh, interested in learning about uh, valve surgery, and and I uh, hear your name a lot. Uh, the the website is frequented very very much by our patients. So so thank you as well. Great. Well, let's keep that momentum going, and now let's talk about patient candidacy for robotics. Can we maybe start by learning a little bit about your history and your experience with robotic? mitral valve surgery. How many procedures have you performed and is it a big part of your practice? Yeah, absolutely. It has become a much, much larger part of my practice uh, than before. I started doing robotic heart surgery in 2006. So we're closing in on 20 years now. I do all manner of robotic surgery on the heart, coronaries, valves, ASDs, um, you know, congenital disease, tumors of the heart. Um, and so uh, my whole practice is focused on robotic heart surgery. I don't do any open surgery at all anymore, which is a luxury, if you will, but it's also um, a, a huge benefit to the patients. And, you know, our program is sought out from, from all over the place to have that done. In terms of the mitral valve specifically, about, I would say, 60% of my uh, robotic heart surgery volume is now mitral valve. Um, and, uh, we're closing in on about uh, 900 or so um, robotic mitral valve procedures. We've gotten very, very good at identifying who's a candidate, who's not a candidate, and making the outcomes as best as they can be. Dr. Balki, I can't thank you enough for that commitment to the space of robotics. And I've got to ask you, I'm sure patients are wondering, what is the value of the robot for both patients and for surgeons? Yeah, no, that's a great question. And and seeing that I just finished clinic about a half hour ago, I've, I've had that conversation just very recently. One of the benefits uh, to the patient is that we are able to see the mitral valve better than what, what can be seen through a sternotomy. And the only people that recognize this fact are surgeons who are using the robot. Um, and the reason for that is the mitral valve is actually positioned such that it faces the right chest. So when I insert my robotic camera, which by the way, is 10 to 12 times magnified, very, very clear 3D, um, the Da Vinci robot right now is in its fifth generation. So it's a highly, highly well-oiled machine and it's just a beautiful view. Um, I can see the mitral valve with all of its structures and all of the components of it, almost in my mind, in my own experience, a hundred times better than I was able to see it when I was cracking the chest open. Because in those cases, I had to rotate that valve that was facing to the right to allow it to face to the top. And there are good uh, studies with good data that show that patients who have their mitral valve approached through the side with a scope have a higher likelihood of repair. And as most of your patients probably know, as you've educated them nicely over the years, a repair is much better than a replacement. So that's the huge benefit from, from the patient standpoint. The second benefit is that you don't have a sternotomy, which means that you don't have to heal from a sternotomy. And the less invasive the approach, the quicker the recovery we find. And when we do a robotic mitral surgery in, in my program, we are doing it totally endoscopically. So the largest incision that the patient has measures eight millimeters in diameter. So you can imagine how 
once the chest tubes are out of the chest, which usually happens the next day, they really don't have any pain and they don't require any narcotic pain medicine. And so it's not uncommon for our healthy young patients who have mitral valve disease that get a repair. It's not uncommon for them to go home the next day. And if they have a job that requires them to be back in the office, they're back there within a couple of weeks um, and a physical job within two or three weeks, uh, you know, very commonly. There's no restriction that I impose upon my patients. It's more just when the soreness is, is better. We did a study on postoperative pain management, and we found that almost 80% of our patients never even fill the narcotic pain uh, pills that we, um, the, the prescription that we send them home with. So once those chest tubes are out, they stop taking anything that's uh, that's a narcotic. The ergonomics to the surgeon uh, are significantly better when we are sitting down um, and, and able to conduct the operation in a more comfortable position. Dr. Balki, it's great to hear about all of those benefits for both patients and surgeons. Who is a good candidate for robotics? Sure. Yeah, I, I think that is closely aligned with the surgeon and the surgical team's experience. And so as we get more experienced in doing robotic surgery, the uh, inclusion criteria open up a little bit. And uh, I'll explain what that means. Uh, when I first started doing robotic mitral surgery, I was focusing only on patients who had isolated mitral valve disease. If they had an, accom uh, an accompanying tricuspid valve problem, we wouldn't do those. Uh, if they had a complex valve, we probably wouldn't do those. Or if they had um, a previous operation, we wouldn't do those. That's all changed. Um, very quickly within the first four or five years, we gained a lot of experience. And now in my mind, pretty much the exclusion criteria are very, very minimal. The only patient that I would shy away from right now is probably somebody who has a really, really heavily calcified valve um, that would do better uh, with decalcification using a traditional approach. And even in those cases, we have a lot of new things that can be kind of applied from the side using a robotic approach. So even that is not a strict contraindication. But somebody, say, who's had previous heart surgery through a sternotomy, are they a candidate? Absolutely. Somebody who has had a previous mitral valve operation through the side using a robotic approach or a non-robotic mini thoracotomy approach, those are candidates as well. Um, there is one type of patient that would be really hard, uh, which is somebody with, who's had a lung resection. So if somebody had previous lung resection surgery, and I'm talking about a major resection, the likelihood that there is not a lot of scar in their chest is pretty low. And so those are the ones that we kind of step away from and say, you'd probably be better served with a uh, sternotomy incision. Um, but regular scar tissue from previous heart surgery, that's a, a total do. Dr. Balki, a lot of patients at heartvalvesurgery.com have comorbidities like atrial fibrillation and coronary artery disease. Can the robot be used to treat both those cardiac conditions and mitral valve disease? Absolutely. Um, I'll take atrial fibrillation first, uh, and that's a very, very common association with mitral valve disease. Uh, we see a lot of it, and the approach is exactly the same as what we would be doing for a mitral valve repair that is isolated. Um, we do the maze, the Cox maze operation, which is very effective. Uh, we actually use the robot to treat atrial fibrillation by itself sometimes called standalone AFib, uh, and that's a, a, a nice, uh, totally less invasive operation with little holes from the right side. So we can do the exact same thing in combination with mitral valve. Now, if somebody has coronary artery disease, um, I think it was in 2010 that I was first faced with this problem, and we did a combined robotic, totally endoscopic coronary bypass and mitral valve repair. And I think we have a couple of those these month, this month, actually. Um, and uh, basically what that entails is it entails expertise with robotic TCAB as well as robotic mitral valve repair. Um, and uh, you have to really select those patients very carefully. Like we wouldn't do somebody who needs a triple bypass uh, and a mitral valve. It's usually somebody with single or double vessel coronary disease. We would combine that. Dr. Balki, I'm curious, can you perform a mitral valve and an aortic valve procedure at the same time? A combination of uh, aortic valve and mitral valve problems can also be managed robotically. And uh, we have some, some good publications and videos on that topic in terms of teaching. 
Um, and, and some of those patients can be, again, you have to choose them carefully. They have to be, you know, robust. They have to have good left ventricular function. Um, and, uh, and, and you have to know exactly what you're doing. Dr. Balki, it's great to hear how the inclusion criteria for robotics has expanded over the years. I've got to ask, are there any misconceptions about robotic mitral valve surgery? One um, uh, misconception that I've seen a lot, and I actually talked about it today in my clinic, is patients who uh, require a mitral valve replacement. Uh, one of the misconceptions is that those patients cannot have a robotic operation. That's absolutely not true. Those are actually easier sometimes than repairs. Uh, I saw a young woman today with rheumatic heart disease, and she has a stiff valve that we would normally not repair with any kind of good success. And we're going to replace her valve and she'll get it robotically. The uh, largest incision is going to be the size of what is required to put the valve inside the chest, but that's it. Everything else is eight millimeters. And so I think that um, there's a very, very, very few patients today that I would not operate on with the robot. Well, Dr. Balki, I cannot thank you enough for sharing all of these insights about robotic mitral valve surgery and patient candidacy with us today. And on behalf of patients at heartvalvesurgery.com, patients all over the world, thanks so much to you and your team at the University of Chicago Medicine for taking such great care of heart valve patients. Thanks for being with me today. Thank you very much, Adam. It was great to be with you. Hi everybody, it's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit heartvalvesurgery.com.